Well, thank you so much, man, for taking the time. Yeah. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah, we're excited to dig in um, and we can just get started. So yeah. I know, men, you started off with uh, your work in trauma surgery and as a physician. So I'm curious, maybe if you can touch a bit on your background and how you got interested in bioelectricity. Yeah, uh, this is a kind of a long story. <clears throat> so I was taught as I was trained as a trauma surgeon in China and the grad after graduate from military medical school. And uh, I work with one of the founders of uh, maybe trauma surgery in China, uh, uh, Professor Wang. And uh, uh, that time is mainly on the, what they call the blast injury. It's like uh, explosives and uh, uh, severe damage and to see how that caused damage and how the tissue repair. And then after that, I went to London to work with Jeff Bernstock and um, molecular biology and biochemistry at the University College of London. Um, I still think I, I would go back to China to continue my uh, clinical work. So I kind of uh, tried to look around for a job, uh, uh, look for a more project, which is more kind of uh, close to uh, our <laughs> uh Sorry. Um, and uh, so I found Professor uh, Colin McCaig and John Forrest at the University of Aberdeen. And I went there. And that time, Colin was working on uh, like a tissue uh, regeneration of the central nervous system. So he's using electric fields to guide uh, neuron growth, like neurite growth. And John Forrest was working on corneal wound healing. So I, it's a kind of perfect uh, combination for me looking back. And uh, I combined the electrical uh, signaling together with uh, the wound healing uh, research and it works well. Uh, so uh, so I, I think I should avoid getting other people into the, uh, so, um, so that's why it bring me to this electrical regulated wound healing. And at the beginning, we were only trying to understand whether this is a, a one of the factors in healing of uh, the wound. But eventually, we found out that the electric signal can override other guidance mechanisms, and that kind of prompted me prompted me to to think more. Uh, not this is a, only one mechanism, but could be a predominant mechanism maybe a conserved and ancient one. If you look at the wound healing, you think about the single cell molecules, plant or animals from salamander uh, and other uh, lower organisms to us as a human. And all, we all heal of the wound. And what is the conserved uh, key thing is that the breakdown of the barrier of the inside and outside. And the immediate effect is the communication between the inside and the outside. And we know that the inside and the outside of the animal have this uh, chemical gradient as well as the electrical gradient. And so this electrical breaking down of the barrier is the same mechanism for wound in plant, in single cell, and for all the animal species and to us as a human being. So this electrical communication might be the initial signal that telling the organism that there's a breach of the barrier and we need to repair it. And when the ba barrier recovers and this communication stops, this wound electric current will stop. So uh, I, that time I'm thinking, I probably need to move to a a bigger place to understand the fundamental biology of it and then to develop this uh to 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 use this mechanism to help wound healing so that's kind of prompted me to move uh to uh university of california davis and uh, even before that and uh, mike and i uh knew each other's work and uh, we think this really as a fundamental mechanism 
not only for wound healing, but as Mike showed, uh, for many, uh, for developmental biology, for cancer, and for other, uh, many other biology too. So this is a probably, I don't want to go too long, but this is a kind of a short journey of my, why I get here. That's fascinating. Well, thank you for sharing that. So we want to dive a bit into the history of the field. And um, while we certainly want to understand the history of the 1900s and how the field has developed, I know you've written a bit about some of the origins of bioelectricity as well, going back to Galvani's days. Could you touch a bit upon the origins of the field? Um. I think Mike probably is much better person to talk about the origin of bioelectricity. Uh, uh, so, so Mike, maybe. Yeah, I, <clears throat> I guess I guess maybe um, uh, to put it another way, uh, as as you were developing your uh your your work in the in wound healing, because because I think you know uh you, you actually your your work in wound healing is is uh, quite quite unique it's very different from what we do and it's very different from what other um developmental biologists who do bioelectricity in the field do and i'm we you know you can talk about what are the um what are the inspirations you know as you think about the bigger questions of like what what how how is wound healing um how is it controlled? What what are the evolutionary, uh, you know, do 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 the different uh, the types of wound healing that you find, for example, in amphibia in mammals, uh, and so on? Are they the same? Are they different? Um, what kind of what kind of background in that field informs your thought? You know, what how do you, how do you think about these things? Um, yeah. So if we're talking about general wound healing in uh in human skin or mammalian skin, and this actually went back almost 200 years ago about this Dubon Raymond, a German physiologist. He, well, he was the founder of the modern electrophysiology. He actually measured action potential. Um, and uh, that time is not a single axon action potential, but it's a, a bundle of axon together. And uh, if you stimulate one end, the action potential would propagate to the other end. And this is a, so, he is the first one who discovered that, but almost at the same time, he trying to see whether there's any current uh, flowing in and out of the skin bridge or wound. And he found that. And uh, so so it, it is not uh, a new discovery. Uh, if we go back to uh, Galvani's time, and uh, indeed those kind of the cut nerve and uh, a piece of frog skin, and at the wound edge, there would be this wound electric current. And Gavani used this as a source. But that time, the understanding is very limited. So he thinks that this is uh, like animal electricity is a kind of a, 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 a imaginary uh, vitalism. Uh, <laughs> but now we understand it's like blocks of ions. And actually the tissue cells pumping ions and generate and maintain this electric current. So uh, if we go back and you can see that uh, although our, well, the, the understanding is not really as correct as we see it now, but the phenomena or the discovery, the observation were there. They found out that wherever you bridge, uh, uh, organism and the, the, there will be a kind of uh, flux of ions and eventually we 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 see this as a kind of uh, flux of specific ions this is a kind of different from the electron electricity we we use every day in our electronics and in our uh, appliance that the electricity generated by the uh, power plant actually to drive the electron flows through the conductive metals but in human, well, in biology, it's more flux of ions, a different like sodium, potassium. So the while the understanding getting more and more uh, detailed, uh, uh, scientific, but the observation of the electricity in wound at wound actually went back to well, hundreds of, of years ago. And it, for if we, as Mike just mentioned, if we look at the wound of single cell, 
if we will have a single cell. If you punch a hole, do we have electricity there at the at, at the hole, the, the wound, the primitive wound? And they are, we measure them, and other people measure it too. So uh, early days, uh, probably last uh, century, uh, about nearly 100 years ago, people used this uh, big axons. They make a cart, and they can measure this injury current flowing out and in. And we know, know now because you have a membrane potential, and you cut it. And you can measure this current flowing in and out, while well, this flux of iron in and out, and this generate uh, uh, injury current. And uh, with a, a small, what well, was uh, like a uh, um, frog, uh, with frog skin and uh, many other tadpole skin, and if you make a wound, this flux of iron happened, and this would generate the electricity. And uh, now to human beings, this electricity generate more or less in the same uh, uh, principle. But if you look at the, uh, so, so so this is the question I go back to early days where I start to work with uh, uh, Colin McCaig and John Forrest. And uh, I'm always wondering whether, is this true? And uh, many other people question about electricity. What is it and how, how it would happen at a wound? Uh, does it, is it really important? And uh, I asked, I keep, I kept asking myself too. And this, uh, but if you look at a single organism, an evolved multicellular organism, and to us, this barrier inside and outside always there. And if the initial uh, bridge to the cell, single cell membrane happened, and the cell either re resealed it or uh, the cell, cell will die, and uh, so this 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 would be a cue or a signal that happens so ancient in biology, and I think biology, the evolution will take the cues from the nature and say, well, we'll develop a mechanism that to use this signal to develop to heal, and so the biology can evolve and. Uh, complex uh, organisms originate. So uh, although specifically with skin wound or other epithelial wound, we have this uh, electrical uh, signal happens. But if you go back to the evolu evolution to the very start of the life, and this bridge of the membrane or the barrier happened at the same time uh, uh, when this flow of ions happens, and that is intrinsically related to electricity generation at wound. And uh, so I, I would think if the biology doesn't take that uh, as, a, as a mechanism, it doesn't go well with Darwin's evolution. And we know the evolution is just biology will take any cues to get it better to survive, to repair and to evolve. So uh, that makes me believe this is this is fundamental mechanism. Although we, we focus on wound healing, but I think for many other aspects of life, it would be hard to imagine that the life doesn't really, well, ignore this, this intrinsic aspect. So I guess when, if we go back to when you entered the field and this might be more of a general question but what was how would you describe the state of the field then in terms of the major thinking in the field or the experiments that were being worked on or just even the excitement around bioelectricity um i guess probably this field is like many other fields that uh, Sometimes it, it seems it developed quite fast and well, and sometimes uh, you uh, need to well, overcome many hurdles, uh, like those ideas well already well established in the field, and to get people to look into this direction. And uh, 
uh, sometimes I'm, I'm quite optimistic and sometimes I'm, I, I'm, I'm a little bit skeptical that it might take time for people to appreciate this mechanism. Um, so specifically to the wound healing field, and I think people tried use electrostimulation to enhance wound healing long time ago and with many different uh, approach. Uh, and uh, uh, the misconcept is that you stick the electrode there and you would stimulate the wound to heal. But uh, the biology itself is far more complicated than that. Um, so I, I think one of the uh, argument, well, the, the argument supporting you use the electricity in wound healing or regeneration is that it's cheap and uh, a few hundred dollars and you can stimulate the wound to heal. Uh, I think we need to think carefully about that statement. Nowadays, we know that if you develop a drug, you need uh, millions, millions of dollars to, to, to develop, to understand what is really happening behind what the biology system about this chemical. So if we just want to, to spend a few, uh, uh, much, much less uh, amount of money and develop an effective therapy, that is not right. And also because uh, electric stimulation is so easy to implement in cl clinical context, well, although not correctly, in most of the case, but people publish different uh, uh, results and some say, well, this is a magic treatment and the, uh, the wound never healed or, or stay there for many years and after stimulation heals. And some people say, well, this doesn't really have any effect. So if you think about the uh, wound complexity uh, and this is quite, I think it's, uh, this is quite no, no uh, uh, quite understandable. The wound is geologically complex, uh, uh, chemically complex, and physiologically uh, complex. And this is a kind of three-dimensional volume conduct. So when we understand the electricity, we always have uh, metal wires and the electricity flowing from one side in direct direction to the other side. But if you thinking about the 3D conductive media. The electricity go every direction. So, uh, and this is much less well understood <laughs> and, uh, and it's very difficult to study. Uh, so I think the promise is there, but at the same, same time, the community and the, the uh, society need to understand that this is a new, uh, uh, type of therapy will, and the, uh, the funding agency need to spend time and money and effort rather than just think that, oh, this is a magic thing. So you stick the electrode there and the wound heals. Magically, you only spend a few hundred dollars and the magic stuff will happen. Uh, but we start to gradually see people, wow, the funding bodies uh, are willing to, uh, well, it becomes more willing to uh, invest more. Uh, but uh, I would think there's still not uh, maybe enough. Um... So I think part of what you're saying is that initially when people started understanding that electrical currents could heal wounds, they thought there's some magic formula here where if you just apply electricity, it's going to heal. But a lot of your work is involved in understanding how these electrical signals heal the wounds. And it's a lot more complex than simply applying electricity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, as Mike's work already shows that uh, this electricity carried by ions, the charge, uh, because the charge carrier in biology is ions. In the ions, we have so many different types of uh, uh, ions, like sodium, potassium, um, calcium, and uh, so chloride, all those things, and they, they can change. And there are the biology system itself, 
or trying to control it in many ways, use ion channels and pumps and tight junctions. So the equivalent would be the, uh, the battery, the resistors and transistors. Uh, so this biological uh, electronics need to be understood first uh, before we really try to manipulate it. Uh, but uh, well, uh, so um, with the advance of the electronics and as, uh, as Mike uh, is leading the way and uh, uh, by electronics, and I think we will get much better understood standing of, uh, of the, uh, the bioelectricity cell. I think bioelectricity, the name, uh, is being punished somehow by by, by uh, charlatanism and some magic things happens and uh, uh, the dead body and the move and the, 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 the there are some signs in it but it's it's more than that and it's like uh, Michael Faraday many years ago showed this uh, electricity and magnetism somehow connected by this uh, swirling. Uh, needle without touch, and you start thinking about that. Uh, how, how can you actually make those things work together as a as a system? And the biology found a way, and I think uh, Mike leading the way to understand this uh, the biology behind it, and then not only for development of biology, but also offers a, a kind of completely new understanding. Uh, of other uh, aspect of biology, including wound healing and regeneration. Um, Do you have any? I'm interested in um in I mean talking about other uh, prior work and all of that. Um, what what's your what's your take on some of Becker's papers? So Robert Becker, you know, he made some 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 pretty striking claims about the you know rat limb regeneration and things like that uh what's what's your take on all of that and, and he had a quite a different model actually right of, of how it worked what, what do you think about that um i think uh yeah becker's work is 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 pioneering and also um uh, i think it's quite important it's kind of like a somehow form the foundation part of the foundation of uh our work now but uh as I said, that uh, some of the understanding may not be as simple or as accurate as we uh, hope, hope for, or wish for. Um, uh, although, so I, I think this this need to go into uh, direction. Well, in parallel direction. First is to. To apply it as as a uh, uh, Berkus a uh, Berkus work and the, the other things trying to understand it, uh, and uh, they go in in parallel. Uh, I think at the, his time, um, the tools and the, the method methodology are probably not the yet to really make this uh, in a way that we can understand. We can still try that, and the many things in, in medicine is just trying the error. So, for example, you, you try something that works, and that's fine. Or maybe if we understand it, that will be better. But if we don't understand it works, let's let's do it. Uh, but nowadays, because we develop such a powerful mechanism, in, uh, well, uh, uh, we or technology to understand things like uh, uh, Mike, we and other people are doing now more and more, and I think we can understand more. But I, I think uh, for for his early limb regeneration repair work, um, um, what lacks over there uh, is, is mechanistic or well uh, understanding and also a well-controlled approach that is other people or other lab can easily reproduce and uh, develop in in in, in uh, yeah, more scientific uh, uh, direction. And I, I think probably now it's, it's, it's a better time uh, in that time. And uh, we know when, when things develop at, at that particular time, probably we don't have those, those uh, 
techniques or technology to uh to to understand or to get a better control on this point who are some of the other scientists you drew inspiration from in the field or or you built your work upon um i i think this can go well so for the person I actually met, um, and I think uh, Lionel Jeffy is certainly the one. I still remember when I was kind of the the the, the junior young postdoc in London and uh, uh, in Aberdeen. We, we met, and I always get so excited about the uh, <laughs> about this work. And he always say, you know, "Calm down, and uh, you need to uh, really able to explain things clearly." and make other people excited so you become a scientist at the moment you're just a technician and you do a nice experiment and you got nice result but uh, it's very difficult for them. so so this is one of the example he he uh, he's a pioneer of the well the next level of uh what the new era of bioelectricity and he, he did really some pioneer work and i I keep going back to read his papers. Um, so he's one, and I, uh, later on I met uh, like uh, uh, Ken Robinson, uh, uh, Richard Nusitelli, uh, and also uh, uh, Richard Borgens. And I think they all are contributing many uh, important ways to this field including uh, developing the technology to measure the wound electrical field uh, or any type of uh, electricity associated with uh, biological specimens. And they measured the, the electric field at different type of wound and they kind of lay the foundation of the uh, future work. And also there are the other people to show that all uh, the other ones, uh, uh, Ming Pu and the he, he stopped working in this field anymore, but they are the first few, among the first few people demonstrate that they are electricity in biological system, and you can actually measure them, you can map them. And uh, the second thing is that the cell do respond to such an electric field. And uh, the other one is uh, Claudia Sten, and this is uh, probably more relevant to what uh, Mike has been doing in biological systems that they use this uh, uh, modern technology to, to map or measure this electricity uh, around the develop, uh, developing embryos and then see how that relates with, uh, with the uh, developmental process. Um, so, and of course, Colin McCaig and John Forrest, and they're talking about this from the clinical observation of the patient eyes, this swirling movement of the epithelial layers in the cornea during healing process. And if this pattern is disrupted and the wound is not healing well, and how this special move, movement pattern happens, there's many kind of hypotheses, and one including is the electromagnetic guidance of the cell movement. So, um, and as Mike mentioned about the Berkers work, and uh, uh, the all I haven't met uh, them, but uh, I know the work. So, uh, this field's kind of, of course, you know, Mike's work is. Uh, leading the way and uh, I read his paper again and again trying to understand I, I'm I, with my clinical background I'm I'm not uh, uh, very well known very well about genetics and molecular biology so I learned a lot of uh, uh, the molecular bio, uh, chemistry understanding genetics from his work so uh, those work are the foundation and keeps uh, uh, inspiring me and my my lab to push this forward. Um, I'm curious, do you know who were the people working in bioelectricity before Lionel Jeffy's era? 
as you said, Lionel Jaffe was sort of the new era in bioelectricity. Um, yeah, uh, and uh, at the beginning, as I mentioned, that the uh, uh, the uh, bioelectricity when it first emerged, it's, it's like uh, people see this magic effect and the, a piece of tissue twitch and a piece of muscle contract and uh, at that then you will start to move and uh, even the cops move. So the sensation uh, was there, uh, but it's, it, it, the, the, the real development uh, didn't come as uh, like Ma Michael Farage's discovery showing that this this needle without touching it, yeah, it start to move. And uh, uh, Michael Farage's work actually revolutionized, well, leading to the uh, uh, revolution, in the, revolutionized the whole society. Now we see it everywhere. Without him, we would not be here. And then uh, uh, James Clark marks, well, he really, connect this uh, electricity with everyone, everything. And as Einstein said that uh, uh, James Clark's Maxwell is, is, is the giant. Uh, he stand in the shoulder and uh, develop the uh, relative theory. Uh, so those are uh, also great people uh, underlying the the the, the our whole human society move forward. Uh, I kind of forgot what you asked for, sorry. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. I think that answers it. I was curious um, who some of the pioneering scientists were before Lionel Jaffe, but I think you answered it. Okay, <laughs> yeah, it was <laughs> even a more broad sense, yeah. <laughs> but in biology, there are, there are many other, other, other like, uh, uh, Mike mentioned the more clinical relevant people like Becker, and uh, uh, he's a clinician and uh, tried many uh, things. Uh, but it's kind of hard that uh, when uh, people look at uh, uh, like more fundamental biochemistry, uh, uh, genetics, and uh, um, um, so cell, cell biology and uh, but now I think it's probably it's a good time that the bioelectricity get more connected with uh, what traditional understanding of biology itself. I mean, do you want to uh, go go through a few examples? I mean, your work is is really uh, extremely impressive and and very close. I think maybe you're the closest to clinical application in this field. And I'm just curious if you could go through a few, you know, uh, skin, cornea, all of the, like you've done some amazing things. So like, what are the, some of your favorite stories so far that have come out of your lab? Um, yeah, um, so uh, so this can go a little bit further in detail. Yeah. Um, so when I, as I said, when I left London to University of Aberdeen in very north of Scotland, and uh, I was thinking that maybe after a few years and uh, I finished my postdoc training, I would went back to uh, to 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 be a trauma surgeon again. And uh, um, but uh, the uh, I I remember the first thing is the uh, the cell movement in electric field is so dramatic. And that time when I talked to the people in the lab and I said, we don't have a video recorder, we don't have computer recorded. And what I did is that I took a photo at a different time point, like zero well, hour, one hour, two hour, and I print them out on the, on the photo paper and compare them to see whether they move. And the first experiment worked. And I see the cell move directionally. I was so excited. Uh, so, and that, that uh, kind of uh, uh, made me stay there a little bit longer. And then uh, we start to uh, to uh, to to ask. Well, at the wound, there are so many uh, mechanisms we accept that stimulate and uh, guide the cell to into the wound to heal. Now you say electricity and. Uh, how important is this is, is. 
uh, and uh, uh, there was uh, there was uh, a postdoc in my lab. Yeah, so we we tried to make a wound and apply electrical field across. And I remember uh, that time we we start to have the video recorder. We can see the wound edge move. For example, this is a wound. This is the one side of the wound, the other side of the wound. And he, what people normally do is to measure the area in the middle about the wound and to see how the the wound becomes smaller. And she, after a few months, she never told me the result. And I keep asking her, and it turned out that uh, she thought that I want to see the wound getting smaller. But what she, uh, her result is that when she apply electric field across the whole field, and the one side moving, the other side move away. So the wound area didn't really <laughs> become much smaller than the control because the control wound actually moving in the heels. So uh, she was quite hesitant to tell me the result. So I said, well, after this two or three months experiment, uh, I would like to see the result. So she bring the, uh, the video to me and I start to see this one side moving on the guidance of the electric field, the other side being guided away. And I said, wow, so it looks like this is more important because uh, at this uh, experimental world, we have all other work, uh, accepted guidance cues, but applying this electric field, you override them. So one side actually move away. And this is more important than I thought. Um, so I said, well, this, 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 this is not just make it go smaller, but it actually override the, the uh, guidance mechanism like uh, injury stimulation, contact inhibition re release, the population pressure growing to the wound or the chemical release at the wound to attract the cell in. So this is not just the one of the mechanisms. It seems that it overrides and being a predominant or master signal guiding the cell into the wound, mobilize and guide the cell into the wound. So that time I, I start to thinking about this. This is more, because at the wound, you have so many different chemicals like growth factors. You could have hundreds of them. And if you add each of them there, you will see some sort of effect. But none of them are able to really make this piece of tissue actually go away or in as you change the guidance direction. And then we ask the question whether the, the electricity caused such effect is uh, is physiological. And uh, we look into the literature and we see uh, uh, like a, the measurement from Ken Robinson's lab and then Lucidelli's measurement and Ken, and Richard Bogan's measure and the 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 measurement the like I mean the field strengths are within that you can measure at uh, the in vivo wound. So this physiological electrical field are able to guide to have this overriding guidance effect. So I start thinking, oh, maybe this is not just one of the mechanisms. It could be a, a predominant or master signal to mobilize and guide the cell, at least in a simple uh, healing uh, wound healing model. And we tested the in kind of like a organ culture uh, system, and this shows still shows the same effect. So that gets me more kind of excited. Well, we talked about the the fundamental magnets, but this experiment uh, uh, made me thinking about this could be a uh, very important magnets. And then, so, so, so this uh, is kind of like a second uh, discovery. And that time, nobody actually are able to use other guidance mechanisms like a chemotaxis or durotaxis or any other gu guidance could to cause a massive cell movement. Uh, so this is the other, I think, uh, I remember well uh, what come up from the lab. 
And then we start to thinking about, okay, there are many genetic and molecular mechanisms regulate the cell movement. Does this electric field or electric guidance actually use those mechanisms or, or, or intersect with those uh, genetic and uh, um, molecular mechanisms? So I start to get uh, in touch with uh, like a Peter Devotis at Johns Hopkins and uh, Henry Bond at UCSF and uh, uh, Joseph Penninger that time at the University of uh, Toronto because they all study this chemotactic effect and they use a molecular and genetic approach to see how cells migrate directionally in chemical gradient. So I trying to work with them to see. And uh, funny thing is that at the beginning, uh, when I contact them about this electric field guided cell migration, they are very skeptical. And they were thinking, well, what the electric field? And all the other ones, uh, Vic Small uh, in Vienna, and uh, at that time I was in Scotland, it's closer, uh, closer uh, in, in distance. And they're trying to do ex similar experiments. It's, it's very hard to repeat because they are, most of the lab members are trained in biochemistry and molecular biology. They are very, very good. And they are leading ex experts, manipulate the chemicals. But with electronic, electronics is, is less, uh, it's, it's probably less familiar to them. So uh, in the lab, it's, uh, it's difficult to repeat. But I, I said, well, I can come over to do the experiment in your lab. And uh, I went there and uh, we reproduced this electric guided cell uh, movement. And then we start to use a different model organism like a uh, dictyostelium. We knock out the genes and uh, with uh, neutrophil in Henry Bond's lab, we, we block out a certain signaling pathway. And we, with Joseph Penninger, we, uh, he has this expertise to knock out genes in, in mice, and we can use this cell and tissue to test and see how the cells actually uh, sense or transduce this electric signaling uh, into cell directional response. And that time we found out that the key molecules like uh, the PI3 kinase or P10, those uh, like important intracellular signaling mechanism kind of participate in this electrical field guided cell migration and in wound healing too. So uh, that bring our, uh, uh, with, with their help and together with them, we start to understand more about this uh, important mediators or molecular mechanisms underlying this electrical guided uh, cell and tissue movement and wound healing. Um, so those are, I, I, I think, the early uh, the experiment I remember in the in the lab. Uh, this is still bring back a lot of uh, 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 very good memories to working in different place and uh, working with different people and uh, uh, people start uh, uh, being very skeptical and uh, later on becomes very very. Uh, enthusiastic and uh, like Peter devotees we're still uh, working together trying to understand how this for example one of the signals one of the project work, work together is that the cells now are in an environment they have a chemical uh, uh, environment mechanical environment and with Wolfgang Lucet and the uh, University of Mer uh, Maryland and also electrical environment and how the cell integrate them and into a kind of cell behavior response. Although we are able to understand them in separation the one by one, but uh, the integration uh, is, is, uh, is, uh, is a key. Well, I think we, we are not there yet, but uh, I think probably with this, uh, this uh, integrated approach, we'll, we we'll eventually are able to combine biochemical, biomechanical, and bioelectrical together to see how cells are collectively, well, 
make a collective uh, uh, decision and respond to such a diverse environmental uh, cues. And we were talking about uh, mechanical or uh, mechanism. The Donald Ingeber is, uh, is, is another uh, person who inspired me. And I remember when we spoke at the meeting and he said, don't keep going because at uh, the beginning when he, he working on mechanical things and uh, people are always wondering, well, the mechanical force out there and the, the cells always get the uh, chemicals and they bounce something and signaling and cell respond. And when you're talking about mechanical, how do how, how do cell do it? And uh, so uh so he, he's a big uh, uh uh source of inspiration for me as well. And what are some of the questions that you are exploring currently? Um yeah so when we uh when I uh, moved the lab uh, to the U.S. from the U.K. and uh, I was thinking there was uh, kind of three direction I would like to pursue. Uh, the first is that I mean we we talk about the wound we can measure the electric field. So how the wound actually produce such electric field and regulate it? And uh, we know that. Uh, our tissue or the wood are composed by the cells mm -hmm. and the cell form a, form a tissue and uh, the cell have this ion channels and pumps and those ion channels pumps together with the height junction and uh, the, the form a biological electrical circuit. And this circuit actually generates this electricity and it come into being when the barrier is broken down to change a long time. And then when the wound heals, it disappeared. So a fundamental question would be how the wound actually produce and regulate such a signal to, uh, to best achieve uh, wound healing. Um, and uh, so we're trying to, to see whether we can find uh, the, what we call the molecular generator is like a, uh, like a little power plant in the tissue that actually generate this electricity and uh, in response to injury. So this is the one direction. And the other direction is that uh, how the cell actually sense such an electric field. And this is a long-standing question and many people in the field are working on that too. Uh, because when I first see the cell movement, I, I talked with... Uh, traditional electrophysiologist. And uh, 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 very disappointing to me is that most people say, oh, no, they, don't, they, they won't do anything because the field is so weak. Uh, because if you need to induce action potential, you need a much larger field, much stronger field, and uh, they don't do anything. But uh, if you look at the video of the cell movement and the wound healing process, the cell certainly respond to it. And although, as I said, that working with um, Joseph Penninger, Henry Bond, Peter Davoudis, we discover some of the important molecule and genetic uh, element. But we were not, we have not found a, a sensor yet. So for, for example, we can see light, elect light is electromagnetic magnetic waves and our retina detected and we can start to see them so the cell sense it but for such a small dc nature electric field we don't know what uh, <laughs> the sensor they are we we have some clue we have some indications and we found out some of the mediators but the sensor uh, have largely been elusive we have uh, so so this is a, another direction uh, we're trying to to see whether we can we can eventually find the sensor, but maybe sometimes I'm thinking about Donald Ingeberg's uh, saying about how the cell sense the mechanical force, and I remember one of his uh, words is that the whole cell is a sensor, so maybe that's true. <laughs> so this whole cell just sense it, 
as, as a whole unit. It's not the traditional ways like we have molecule and it has a ligand and a sensor. So the, the sensor could be more complicated in just a, a single molecule. It could be a set of molecule. It could be the cell as a as a as a as a sensor. Um, but it was still, as I said, working with uh, with Peter Delotis, and uh, we we're trying to 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 manipulate genetically the molecule to see whether we can find the sensor. So the second direction, the third direction is the uh, uh, is like working with uh, uh, Marco Rolandi from uh, and other colleagues from. Uh, Santa Cruz and uh, Rivka Isorov, a uh, clinician scientist here at UC Davis, and uh, together with Mike, we're trying to see whether we can we can develop some treatment uh, to precisely regulate the wound electricity and uh, deliver uh, chemicals electronically to help wound to heal. Um, so this is another direction: is that if we even if we don't understand fully the mechanism, how the cells, cell sends the electric field, how the wound generates the electric field, but we possibly can use it and develop technology to enhance the wound healing. Well, at the same time, we're trying to gain more fundamental understanding. So those are the three directions my lab are, are pursuing. Now. You know, one of my one of my favorite uh, papers of yours is the one with us. I think the first author is Sun, where uh, you've got the, the 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 entire cells are going one way in the electric field, and if you fragment them into pieces, all the pieces are going the other way. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was incredible. That was yeah, incredible. yeah, yeah. So, uh, so I he uh, yeah I remember I remember this experiment was uh, conceived many years ago. Uh, before we actually are able to do it, I remember I tried it with Henry Bourne. So uh, this this was back in Aberdeen, and uh, when I saw paper about uh, the fragment of cell. So so well, fragment of cells means that the cell doesn't have nucleus; just part of the cytoplasma come down, uh, and uh, this 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 are biological significant to uh, platelets is such a kind of structure. And uh, if we now exosome, this, those are membrane circled structure with uh, a little bit cytoplasma inside. And what Mike mentioned about this uh, is that when we uh, read this uh, neutrophil actually release part of this uh, cytoplasma as a little particle or little fragment uh, to in combat infection, so I went to his lab and I was trying to to do that experiment. It, it, it turned out it's quite difficult to get enough cell fragment from neutrophil. Uh, so we never been able to get a conclusive result. And later on when we were in Aberdeen and uh, uh, Julie Theoret, uh lab has this, uh, well, the other lab at the show, oh, the, 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 the other group showed that the fish cratocyte, they are very big. So when uh, you treat them with certain chemicals, the part of the cell body comes off. And this little fragment still are able to move around. So we were thinking, oh, so this, this is a good example. And uh, together with uh, Alex von uh, that time uh, he was at University of Aberdeen. Oh, no, University of California, Davis. He later on moved to NYU. And so we uh, we talked with uh, Dr. Sun and I said, well, let's culture the cells and to see generate this fragment, put them in electric field. And the result is kind of, <laughs> well, we never expected. So the fragment come off, actually move in opposite direction from the mother cell. And uh, uh, so, so this, uh, <laughs> so it looks like the, uh, the sensor and the response and decision making are kind of different uh, part of the the whole process. So the cell can sense it, and the cell can respond it. 
to 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 electric field, but the cell also can make a direction to see whether they want to go left or right or to and the orgasm. So this this uh, makes me thinking more about that what uh, Donald Inger was uh, saying that maybe the whole system is a sensor. It just doesn't use a single piece of molecule and I sense it that responded. It's like a it's it's coordinate itself and make the decision to go to the cassette or to the uh, anode. Um, so yeah, thank you, Mike, for bringing that, uh, uh, that, that, that uh, really mind-boggling uh, uh, experiment up. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we could never ever uh, sort the result like this. We would think the, 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 the fragment come up will move together with the mother cell. But no, they didn't. <laughs> they moved the opposite direction. Yeah, for, for, for me, you know, we, we spend a lot of time thinking about collective intelligence and how the preferences of the collective emerge from the preferences of the parts, you know, how the scaling works. And, and here you showed us a great example where the parts have a certain preference, but the collective, uh, once you put them together, the, the collective actually has a quite different a quite different preference for its action. So I think that's a, I think that's a powerful um, example. Yeah. Thank well, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, you know, I, this is this is a real pleasure. I mean, Min, you and I have known each other for a long time, but I really uh, I think your work is amazing. I think it's uh, the closest probably to, cl to the clinic um, of any of us in the field right now. And uh, yeah, it's it's just uh, yeah, it's beautiful. Well, wow, thank you so much. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, man. Really appreciate you taking the time. This has been amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Much appreciated. Well, so it's a great pleasure. And uh, uh, I hope this Field, uh, keep moving forward, and someday we will see a kind of a new horizon. Yeah.